Hi, today we're going to talk about persistent memory when you're using functions and some optional arguments to functions. So if I look at this function here, counter, I'm initializing a variable to zero, incrementing it by one, and then just printing out the variable uh, counter. So if I want to call this function, the first the function needs to be saved in a file with the same name as the function, so counter.m. And then if I call counter, and I don't need to pass any arguments into the function, so I could call it like that or like that uh, with no parentheses. And it's just going to say the function is called one time, even though I'm calling it multiple times. So we can actually improve on this. Normal variables inside of a function, they're created and then they're destroyed when the function exits. But if we add the word persistent, in front of a variable inside of a function, then that will make it persist or stick around in between calls of the function. And so if the variable is empty, that's the first time that we've called this function, we want to initialize it to zero. Otherwise, it's already got the initial value and we just want to increment it and go ahead and print out the value. So let's see what difference um, it makes when we're actually using a persistent variable. So I'll call that function and the first time it looks the same, we've called the function one time, but then the second time it's able to increment that counter and say two times and then three times and then four times. So that variable counter is persisting or sticking around in between function calls. If you try to use a persistent variable, persistent variable inside of the command window, it's going to give you an error message. These variables are only allowed in functions. All right, another topic I'm going to talk about is optional arguments to functions. So I've got this function area and it's just helping me figure out the area of a rectangle. And so a rectangle has a length and a height and we'll just multiply the length and the height together to come up with the area. So let me comment out a few things that I'm going to use later on. And I'll just run this program as is. Now this is a function called area, so the name of my file better be area.m. So let me change that area. And now I want to call the function so from the command window, I'll type in area, and if I pass in too many input arguments, it's going to say not too many arguments. It's looking for, the way it's written right now, it's looking for two things between parentheses. So I call the function, it passes in the x and the y, the length and the height, and then it calculates the area. Well, what about the case where you've got a square and the length and the height are the same? Well, I have this print statement at the beginning of this function to print nargn. And nargn is a, a function that takes no input arguments that will return the number of inputs that were passed to a function. So right now, if I pass in two things between parentheses, it returns two. But if I were to pass in one thing in parentheses, it would say, you've got one input argument. But then it comes up with an error when we reach this line and say, well, you can't do x times y if we have no idea what y is. You didn't pass in the second input argument. So we could actually design our program to work with either one or two input arguments by using this nrn. We can check how many inputs the user sent. So if the user sent one input argument, then we can say, well, then we have an x, but we need a y. So we're going to use an assignment statement to say, well, the y is the same as the x. And we'll go ahead and save that. And go ahead and, oops, I always forget to run it from the command window by passing in some arguments. So this time I'll pass in one argument. It knows I've only sent one argument in. So it'll set y to the same value as x. If they're both 3, we've got an area of 9, 3 times 3. All right, along with this checking the number of input arguments, there's a function called nrcheck, and it can check to see whether or not the number of arguments that in, were input are in between the range of one and two, or whatever your min and your max are. And if they aren't, 
it can call, we can use that error message it generates and call the error function. And the error function will exit out of this function, um, finish the function even though there's more lines of code here, and it'll print this error message to the screen. But if the error message is null or an empty um, string, then it's not going to print anything. If so if they pass in one or two arguments, we're good. Otherwise, we'll print an error message. So let's save that and see how it runs. So nothing should change if I'm passing in one or two input arguments. But if I don't pass in any input arguments, it can check and say, well, the number of input arguments is actually equal to zero. And when it gets to this line, it checks, is the number of input arguments, uh, this is the variable that gives it the fact that uh, you only pass in zero, is that between one and two? Well, it's not, so I will generate this error message, which is that what shows up in red, and then error will print that error message and exit out of our program, so before we got to this display line. All right, that's a little bit about persistent memory and optional arguments to functions.